Namaste, everybody. Howdy, Bo. Welcome back. Thank you so much for continuing to join us. You know, it's 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 people like you that that we speak to. You know, we do these things because we want to give you what we have been given. See, our spiritual masters, they work tirelessly to give us this message. You know, and as some tiny grain of gratitude, we're just trying to pass it on to you. That's all. You know, nothing more. And so thank you very much for joining us. And all glories to our spiritual masters for giving us this knowledge that we can you know, in our own insufficient way, pass on to you. So today's topic is the three aspects of the absolute. We hear maybe about the absolute truth, you know. What exactly does that mean, the absolute truth? It means truth is always true, yes. But what is that absolute truth in real understanding. So there's three aspects of the absolute truth. And we're going to start at the top and then work down. Sometimes we start at the bottom and work up. But for this particular subject, we start at the top. So the topmost aspect of the absolute truth is called Bhagavan. Bhagavan means the supreme personality of Godhead, the supreme person of all persons. You know, technically, or I won't say technically, but commonly known as God. See? But the real true nomenclature, which most descriptive is supreme personality of Godhead. Supreme, number one, personality. God is a person. Godhead, the head God. If God means dominator, there's many gods because there's so many little gods that dominate a little part here and a little part there. We're gods in one way because we have some little ability to dominate too, you see. But the supreme personality of Godhead, the head god is Bhagavan. The original supreme person known as the Adi Purusha. Everything comes from Bhagavan. Now, God being God, which means basically one of the definitions is unlimited, inconceivable potencies, one of his abilities is to expand himself into other forms. See, we are limited, but the Supreme Lord, unlimited expansions, many, many different forms, and on and on it goes, inconceivable. So one of those features of the absolute truth is the paramatma. That means the Lord in the heart. The supreme personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, expands himself into the paramatma and enters into the heart of every living entity. And it said he even enters into the atom. That's amazing. We can't understand that. But it's truth. Absolute, inconceivable potency. So Paramatma is the Lord in the heart, also sometimes known as the super soul, also referred to as the Cheta Guru, the Lord in the heart. So in our bodies, which are material, remember, they're not us. In our bodies, there's two living entities, us, the spirit soul, Jiva soul, the Atma. And then there is this Paramatma, the absolute expansion of Bhagavan in our heart. That's the second category or second aspect of the absolute truth. And the third absolute or uh, aspect is known as Brahman. Brahman, one definition is spirit. See, Brahman is the effulgence that emanates from the form of Bhagavan. All spirit is effulgent. It's, you know, it's light. Just like we, the tiny atomic inside spirit souls that we are, give off an effulgence. That's why a live body has some light. And I don't know if you've been present when a soul left a body. It could have been a human, could have been a dog, cat, whatever. 
One moment there's light there, you can see it the most reflected in the eyes, and the next moment there's no light. The light has gone. See? It's the aura of the soul. See? All souls are light. Everybody's got an aura. You know, that's a big deal in some esoteric circles. Oh, the aura, so valuable, so important, so cosmic, so mystic, and you know, it's whatever, whatever, you see. But everybody's got an aura, you know. So the supreme person has a supreme aura, and it is the effulgence coming from Bhagavan, and that is the light of the spiritual world, the spiritual light of the spiritual world. Think of it like this. The sun in our universe, the sun illuminates the entire universe. So in the spiritual world, Bhagavan illuminates the entire spiritual sky. And it's all spirit. So these are the three aspects of the absolute truth. Bhagavan, Paramatma, and Brahman. And the journey of the soul through the yoga systems is based on achieving one of those three aspects of the absolute truth. The impersonalist yogi who is trying to achieve the highest level that he perceives as being perfection tries to merge into this Brahman effulgence, the ocean of light, spiritual light. The spirit soul through mystic yoga process, he may use kundalini, he may use the jnana yoga process, different techniques, can actually become free of the material coverings and merge into this ocean of light. A tiny spark merging to the ocean of sparks. And that is one destination. They don't see the supreme absolute as a person, but as this ocean of light. Mm. Although it is the third level, if you will, of the absolute truth, they see it as the number one, perfect, highest level. Mm. And that's their goal, mm. impersonalist yogis. And they think the individual souls that we are now, when they merge into this ocean of light, lose their individuality and they're no more individuals. It's not true. The individual soul is there. He just loses awareness of his individuality, see? But he's still that individual spirit soul. And ultimately, in most cases, that merged soul will, due to his desire for action and service, see, and love, come back down into the world of forms, material world, take on another material body, you see, and He's back on the wheel of birth and death. So that's not the final goal. It is a spiritual destination that can be reached, but it's not the ultimate destination. And then the yogi who uh, meditates on the Lord in the heart. This is, again, a very difficult process. Stanga yoga, where he goes through purification of the body through hatha yoga and you know, stilling the mind through pranayama combined with hatha yoga. He controls the senses completely. He develops the ability to concentrate one pointedly on whatever his object of concentration is, a candle flame, a sunset, you know, whatever, you see. Then he enters into meditation where God becomes the object of his concentration, see. And then finally he becomes fully absorbed in the Focus and concentration on the Lord in the heart. You can actually see the Lord in the heart. He's become very purified, you know, of all kinds of material contamination. He meditates on the Lord in the heart in a tranced condition on his samadhi. See? But because they don't understand Bhagavan yet, he doesn't know about Bhagavan, many times if he goes to the spiritual world, he also goes into the Brahman effulgence. See? And then finally, there's Bhagavan. And the path that leads to Bhagavan <coughs> is Bhakti Yoga. The Bhakti Yogi learns from his spiritual master, from the Bhakti scriptures, see, as Bhagavad Gita teaches, that God is Bhagavan, the supreme personality of Godhead, that he's the source of all love, that we're all his children, and that our 
only happiness lies in tasting love for God. That loving relationship with God, I have to cultivate that. And it's only through devotional service that I can do that. So bhakti yoga is the goal, I mean, is the process of devotional service to finally reach that perfect goal of love for God, see. And that is, that is the perfection of all perfections for the soul. And this is an eternal situation. It's not temporary. There's no chance of the soul falling down from that position. That's declared by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita chapter 8. Once the soul returns to my supreme abode, he never takes birth in the material world again. You see. So the real spiritual master is teaching this. He's a Vaishnava Acharya, teacher by example. He's teaching love for God exclusively, see. And he's, a, he's able to take us back to that eternal destination in that perfected state of love for the Supreme Lord Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. And that's when the heart is fully satisfied, fully happy, you see. Love is is the controlling factor. The ocean of love is unfathomable. It, it never ends. It's ever increasing, you see. And we can bathe in that ocean eternally with the Supreme Lord and all the other lovers of God who are bathing in that ocean. And our life is service to the Lord in this loving relationship. That is perfection. So these are the three aspects of the absolute truth. Bhagavan, Paramatma, and Brahman. As an individual, if you're interested in some spiritual growth, some spiritual journey, you have to decide where you want to go. Because not all paths lead to the same place. Some lead to Brahman, some lead to Paramatma. And Bhakti Yoga, only Bhakti Yoga, leads to Bhagavan. So we're just trying to inform you what's available and leave it up to you to make that decision.